This video is sponsored by Geek Fuel. Stay till the end to learn more and use the link in the description to sign up. Greetings everyone, my name is Sai, and ah, uh, doesn't this bring back memories? The original Portal 2 10 Things You Didn't Know was one of the first videos I ever put a real amount of effort into, and as a consequence, it's currently sitting at around 1,500,000 views. And so it is out of both my own love and dedication to the franchise, as well as my professional obligation to inform you all, that I've decided to make a sequel to that video. And so, without any further ado, let's play a game. If you guys learned one new thing while watching this video, I want you to give it a like. But if you already knew all 10 facts before watching, I want you to give it a dislike guilt-free. Because if you knew everything, that means I didn't do my job properly. And of course, this video will be spoiling the entire game and so you have been warned. So, without any further ado, here are 10 more things you didn't know about Portal 2. God knows how much time I've spent in Portal 2 at this point. Steam says I put in over 200 hours into it, and between my repeated playthroughs of both the single player, multiplayer, and perpetual testing initiative, I 100% believe that figure. So after all the time I've spent in game, I was fairly confident that I'd personally found every really obvious secret. Except that I hadn't, and there was one final one lying hidden in plain sight. So, did you know there's a rat man dead in test chamber 11? Because I didn't, not until a week ago in fact. Yep, you just have to look up while standing on the hard light bridge. I just want to know how I managed to miss that. I mean, granted there isn't like a 40 foot neon sign pointing it out or anything, but it just seems so obvious now that I'm looking for it. That said, I wouldn't really advise visiting it yourself, because A, it's about as standard as Ratman Dens come, and B, unless you're as good a jumper as Wheatley thinks you are, you are probably going to die trying to get back down. So in the previous Portal 2 10 TYDK, I talked about how you can smuggle the companion cube out of Test Chamber 7, but what I failed to mention, and what you may not know, is that you can actually trap yourself in that test by locking the cube past the door. Uh-oh, you're stranded. Let's see if the cube will try to help you escape. Actually, so that we're not here all day, I'll just cut to the chase. It won't. Any feelings you think it has for you are simply byproducts of your sad, empty life. Anyway, here's a new cube for you to project your deranged loneliness onto. Did you ever notice that Test Chamber 5 in Portal 1 was incorrectly marked as Test Chamber 4 in Portal 2? Well, probably not, but I did, because I am a giant loser with nothing better to do with my time than to scour every inch of the game for stuff to complain about. But on a more serious note, I think this is a forgivable mistake considering the real Test Chamber 4 sign is broken in Portal 2, so it's fairly easy to see how they'd lose track. Here is a nice detail that I think is worth calling your attention to. Did you ever notice that when GLaDOS tells Wheatley the paradox, while he is unaffected, and GLaDOS is trying her hardest not to be affected, the Franken turrets in the room with you all short circuit, implying that all the turrets are actually smarter than Wheatley. So based on some observations on my part, it would seem that a few of Portal 2's testing elements got a makeover very shortly prior to the full release. Now I say this because in the ads for Portal 2, you can see they're still using the old model emancipation grids from Portal 1, and the aerial faceplate is just a blue panel. Now of course, these redesigns occurred to make it more immediately obvious to players what each of these devices did. And by the way, I think making the emancipation grids react to visible objects like that is pure genius on the part of Valve's art team. But it is worth noting that Valve wasn't entirely able to erase the work in progress models from the finished product. For example, in the companion cube test, you can see the broken emancipation grid is still using the blue particle effect of the old model, and then during the part where he kills you, you can see it's actually the old model faith plate that launches you. Heck, it doesn't even move properly, because its animations didn't actually make it over into the final release. So, if you listen to Rick, the Adventure Sphere, ramble on for long enough, he'll eventually say the following. Here's the plan. Get him to say, you two have been a thorn in my side long enough. Then tell your pretty ears to stand back, because I'm going to send him into the Stone Age. And interestingly enough, did you know this actually adds an additional line of dialogue for when you beat Wheatley? Warning. Core corruption at 100%. Ah! You have 
been a thorn in my side long enough. Yeah, well, this thorn is about to take you down. Man, that sounded a whole lot better in my head. Ah, the Space Corps. You know, not since Arrow in the Knee has there been a more annoying internet meme which everyone would just shut up about. Thankfully, that died down pretty significantly after Portal 2 started to fade from popular consciousness. But that didn't stop the Space Corps memes from being annoying while it lasted. Side note, that is why I was extremely gratified when he got crushed by a meteor in the first few pages of Blue Sky. But interestingly, did you know the primary inspiration for the Space Corps was actually a commercial for the Oregon Coast Aquarium? Aquarium. 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 I wanna go. Hey. Aquarium. Somebody. I wanna go. Uh, <laughs> So this trivia bit is... interesting, to say the least. In the Cooperative Testing Initiative on Course 2, Chamber 7, there is an interesting bit of dev code that was never removed from the final game. And that is, if you click the Use key at this exact point on the wall, the chamber's doors will open, regardless of not having solved the puzzle. It's just so... weird. I mean, why is it there? What was the intention? And why in that one very specific spot of all places? I mean, I guess the obscurity of it is why it's still there, right? It makes sense that it'd be an easy thing to forget about, but it's just so... odd. And now, because this is pretty much all the trivia I've got for Portal 2, and will more likely than not be the last 10 to OIDK for it, I'll devote the segment to some honorable mentions that weren't quite good enough to make the cut individually, but people incessantly tell me to include regardless. The honorable mentions are the Borealis Easter Egg, the painting at the start that changes, the Ratman radio signals to make the picture of the cube on the moon, the turret quartet, and the hidden picture of Carolyn and Cave Johnson. So, chances are you've heard about the Hoopy BS, right? If you're not hip with the portal scene, then there's been a misquoted bit of information circulating the internet for a while now about an object called Hoopy visible in the ending credits of the first game. And it would be that right there. And apparently, Valve was expecting Hoopy to be the big internet meme for Portal 1, and was surprised when the cake is alive became popular instead. Of course, if you think Valve is actually that stupid, then I have to question your own intelligence. Anyways, if you go read the actual interview Eric Walpole gave that spawned this idea, it becomes apparent very quickly he was just trolling the interviewer. Quote, it was Hoopy the Hoop. We thought we should have a warehouse full of Hoopy t-shirts and mugs and posters. We would watch that hoop roll by over and over again. That was the part of the game we were the most proud of, and nobody cared. So yeah, he's pretty obviously being sarcastic. You know, that'd actually be a fun top five idea. The top five bullshit portal theories. I would love a chance to tear into the whole there are bodies inside cubes thing. But different topic, different time. Anyways, Hoopy. While this turns out to be just a fake internet creation, did you know this would-be meme actually now has a place inside the Portal 2 canon itself? That's right, because you can actually see Hoopy for a split second in the ending cutscene of the co-op DLC. Hey everyone, remember to leave a like if you learned something new, and of course dislike if you already knew everything before watching, because if you did that means I didn't do my job properly. And hey, do you like stuff? I know that I do. Well, if you do like stuff, I recommend going to check out Geek Fuel. Geek Fuel is a monthly box service that gives you things you can actually use, like comics, cups, t-shirts, and Steam games. For example, all the cool stuff you're seeing on screen right now came in only three boxes. And the best part? If you sign up using my special link, because all other links are dirty heretics and must be purged, then you'll get a special $30 bonus box with your first order totally on me. So, if you guys like the sound of that, definitely go check out geekfuel.com slash sci, link down below. Go help them out and help me to you know, live. So guys, that is it. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Later. Special thanks to my Patreon patrons, Matt Flowers, Von Gola, Sky, Isaiah Christo, and Greg McClure, filming to support the channel. 